So let's get to the review. Uh, oh, when you see Mr. Bean made a 30 minute video, for sure, cringes from all over, right? All right, so 6.1, we have to do uh, some solving. Uh, I know this is a really tough section for a lot of people, and I think the number one reason was they just didn't uh, take their time, made a lot of little mistakes. So the first thing you gotta do is you have to find out all the factors. So in this case, I have an x and I have an x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply everything by the least common multiple. In this case, it is x and x minus 2. I have an x minus 2 here, I have an x here, and I have both here. I think the number one thing to do for kids is write it out as much as you possibly can. So I'm going to multiply everything here by my least common multiple. And I know this, this step is a little bit more, and a lot of you guys don't like doing more work than you need to. I don't either. I just think if you have problems with this, this may be a good solution for you. So I'm going to do this first one with every single thing shown. All right. So when I multiply this, remember this is x times x minus 2. So this cancels with this. So everything cancels. So I have 10 plus, in this case, I have my x cancel. See, it's nice when I write it all out. So I'm going to have 4 times x minus 2, and then that's going to equal, so this x minus 2 cancels, so 5 times x. All right, I think it's nice because uh, I notice a lot of kids make mistakes on this, and this solves it. When I tell them this and the kids who actually do it, it really helps. So now I just have to solve this, so this is 4x minus 8. I'm going to subtract 4x. And 5 minus 4x is x, 10 minus 8 is 2. So x equals 2. But we have to remember, uh, we have excluded values. So excluded values, denominators can't equal 0. So x can't be 0 or x can't be 2. So because we have 2, that means there is actually no solution on this one. All right? All right, let's come over here. So in this case, again, this is x plus 6 times x. This is x plus 6 times x. So my, my least common multiple is x and x plus 6. All right. So now I'm going to do it the short way. So I know this whole thing is going to cancel with this whole thing. So I have 5 left. I know, again, this whole thing is going to cancel with this whole thing. So I have 1. All right. Minus, I have x plus 2. Time, so this x cancels x plus 6. Now, uh, another huge mistake. Remember, you have to distribute this negative after all the other work you do here. So 1 minus x times x is x squared. x plus, uh, times 6 is 6x. Six 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 6 is 12. All right, so we're going to combine all these. Uh, this is really 8x, right? So 1 minus x squared minus 8x minus 12. All right, so I need a, con I need a positive x squared, so I'm going to bring everything to this side, so I'm going to add x squared. I'm going to add 8x. And this is 1 minus 12 is negative 11, so I'm going to add 11, and that gives me 16. All right, so I need to factor this. Two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 8. That's actually x plus 4 times x plus 4. So in this case, it's the same answer. So x plus 4 equals 0. So x equals negative 4. All right. Is that an excluded value? No, our excluded values this time would be 0 and negative 6. So that one will work. This happens all the time. You know, you guys turn in packets, and it's not done, and you still think you should get a match check. It, it cracks me up, too. All right, over here, we're going to multiply. So, we, again, we want the uh, least common multiple. So, I have 2u plus 5, and I'm going to do that on top and bottom. All right. And I also have a factor of u minus 2. All right, so... Let's see, when I multiply this first thing by 2u plus 5, that cancels, so u plus 1 times u minus 2, plus this cancels again, so I have 25 times u minus 2, all of that over, 
So to, to you, this cancels again, so I have u plus 1 times u minus 2 again, and notice those are the same. Excuse me, minus. So I'm going to, I'm going to have a distributed negative. 2u minus, or plus 5 times, in this case, 2u plus 5 again. All right. So let's simplify this out. u times u is u squared. Negative 2u plus 1u is negative u minus 2. All right. So we know that is going to be on top and bottom because this is exactly the same. On top, then I have plus 25u minus 50. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the bottom here, we have 2u, that's 4u squared. 2u times 5, 5 is 10u, plus 10u is 20u, and then plus 25. So u squared on top, uh, negative 1 plus 25 is 24u, and negative 2 minus 50 is negative 52. On the bottom we have u squared minus 4u squared is negative 3u squared. Negative u minus 20u is negative 21u. Negative 2 minus 25 is negative 27. And there you have it. Alright. So let's take a look over here. This time, oh yeah, we have to multiply by the conjugate. Big, big, big thing with the conjugate here is you have to remember the conjugate is the only thing that changes is that middle sign. So I'm going to do u plus 3 minus, or excuse me, x plus 3 minus x plus 2 here, and then I multiply it on top, x plus 3 minus x plus 2. So again, on the top, remember, we're not going to bother multiplying this out, but you have to include this as uh, parentheses. So then it's that times x plus 3 minus x plus 2. On the bottom, remember, we're double distributing, and what happens is I have x plus 3 times x plus 3, so that's going to be the square root of that times the square root of that is actually going to be x plus 3. All right. When I multiply this, it's going to cancel the inside. So then it's minus x plus the square root of x plus two times the square root of x plus two, which is just x plus two. All right. The worst thing we we've been doing we have to distribute this. So negative x and minus two. So on top I have four minus x square root of x plus three minus the square root of x plus two. All of that over, x minus x cancels, 3 plus negative 2 is 1, so hey, check it out, over 1 really doesn't mean anything, so we have it right there. All right, 6.3, I actually think this is kind of cool section, I guess this is a dorky math teacher part of me. First thing we want to do is, <clears throat> let's factor it so we have it, um, two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5, x plus 2 and x plus 3. Two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add a negative 4. x minus 6 and x plus 2. Right? All right. So now, any holes, holes are going to be where we can cancel. So like this x plus 2 cancels here and here. So there's going to be a hole at x equals negative 2. All right, vertical asymptotes are where it doesn't cancel. So at this one right here, <clears throat> x equals negative 3. That'll be our vertical asymptote. All right, uh, let's go down here, find our y-intercept. That's when x is 0. So when x is 0, these all cancel. 0 squared, 0. So that's going to be negative 12 over 6. Negative 12 over 6 is negative 2. So we have a point at 0, negative 2. And then we have a point over here, our x-intercept. Our x-intercept is when y is 0. So 0 equals, now again, these cancel here, right? 
boom, boom. So this is really x minus 6 over x plus 3. Multiply 0 times x plus 3 is 0 equals x minus 6. So actually, x equals 6. So we'll have a point at x equals 6 and 0. Horizontal or slant asymptote. So slant asymptote. They're there, excuse me. So our rules. If the top is smaller than the bottom, we have one at y equals 0. And so these are the same. Our rule number two, when the top is bigger, there is no horizontal asymptote. That'll be a slant asymptote and we'll have to divide. And then the rule number three, when they are the same, you divide the coefficients. So coefficients here are 1 and 1. So 1 divided by 1, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. All right, so let's graph. Let's graph everything we can. So the first thing we know, we can graph this whole at x equals negative 2, right? So, well, we can't graph that just yet. We'll get to that in a second. There's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So very carefully. All right, so we have, we have an asymptote right there. We also know there's going to be a y-intercept at 0, negative 2. Right there, perfect. We know there's going to be a uh, x-intercept at six zero. Right there, perfect. And we know there's going to be a, at y equals one. There's going to be a horizontal asymptote. Right there. All right. Now, if I'm a betting man, if I were a betting man, I would bet it's going to look something like this and this. But again, this is the part where, yeah, you could plug in some values of x to find out, all right? But um, we want to go take a look at the graph on our calculator. Ah, look at that. We, we do, in fact, have it, all right? So um, you can see our asymptotes here at 1, right? And our asymptote here at negative 3. Perfect, okay? So let's uh, draw that. Remember, these asymptotes just mean they are approaching it. Oh, that is a terrible curve, Sullivan. Just absolutely terrible. Terrible. All right, so remember, at x equals negative 2, x equals negative 2, there's a hole, so we need to make sure we put a hole there. Okay? And that is graphing. Yes! I love this. I have some kids that sometimes, you know, they get stuck on one and then they finally pass it and it is a huge deal. I had the best kid yet last year. He just went nuts, did a little dance. I wish I had videotaped it. All right, 6.4. 6.4, here we go. Write the equation of the variation. So, a couple things we need to remember. Inversely is division, right? So the electrical resistance R of a wire varies inversely, so K inversely as the square of its diameter. For some reason, kids mix up square and square root a lot. Square to the power of square root, all right? The frequency of sound varies directly, so that's multiplication, so K times the square root of the tension, the square root of the tension, and inversely, so divided by the square root of the mass. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, jointly, that means we have a couple things going on at the same time. So they vary jointly. W varies jointly as x, y, and z. If w is 36, when x is 2, y is 8, and z is 12, we need to find w when x is 1, y is 2, and z is 4. All right. Oops, z. We didn't need to write the z there. So z is 4. All right. So let's do this here. We got 36 equals 2 times 8 times 12. That's 192. 192k. All right. Divide that over. And we get K equals 0.1875. So now we're going to plug that K into here. In fact, I'm just going to, instead of putting it here, I ran out of room. So I'm going to put it over here, uh, 0.1875. So we can find our W now over here. 
multiply all those out and we get our W as 1.5. Nice. Application real quick. Sully can put up his holiday lights in a certain amount of time. All right, let's say Sully is a certain amount of time. Brust is 20 more minutes. So Brust is 20 more minutes, X plus 20. And if they work together, so our total would be 24 total minutes. Nice. Plug them in here. So 1 over X plus 1 over X plus 20. That's mine. That's Bruss. And the total would be 1 over 24. And then you guys can solve that and figure that out. All right. Best of luck on the test, and I will see you on the flip side.